welcome back to Time to Go Travel and Time Pieces. Bob here, and today we are going to be taking a look at a watch from a company that I find has a lot of really interesting offerings. That company is Alpina, and the watch we're looking at today is one of their dive watches. This is the Alpina uh, Extreme Diver 300. So let's spin the camera around and we'll take a closer look at the watch. Okay, so I'm just going to start this off by going through some of the packaging. The packaging for this watch is actually really kind of unique and interesting. Um, so it comes in an oxygen tank uh, shaped display box. This is actual uh, metal. Um, the innards of the box we have the pillow here for the watch now this watch comes with two straps so there's a slot here for the second strap it also has an instruction booklet as well as an international warranty card now the strap options i'll just run through those with you guys quickly uh, so it comes on this it's an alpina velcro uh, strap Pretty nice, it's actually quite comfortable, although I don't think I'm gonna really wear it on this uh, strap. Now the bracelet that it comes with is also very nice. It has uh, brushed H-links with highly polished center links. You can see right here it is signed with Alpina's triangle logo. It is a push button deployment clasp and uh, it's quite nice. Uh, there's no taper is the only thing with this one and I believe this is a 22 millimeter uh, bracelet. It is a 22 millimeter bracelet. There's no taper and I find uh, with 22 mil bracelets when you move your wrist around it can kind of pinch a little bit. So I ended up finding this really cool uh, Kevlar strap with orange stitching to kind of match the watch. I'm really loving it on this so far. Um, I will say this is the first Kevlar strap I've owned and it's very stiff at first although it's starting to finally uh, break in a little bit here now. On to some of the specs of the Alpina. Um, first of all, the case width is measured on most sites as being 44 millimeters, and that is the measurement if you go from the bottom to the top of the case. As you can see on the side here, there's a little step up on either side of the watch, and that adds about a millimeter and a half, making it a total of 45 and a half millimeters from side to side. Now, the lug width on this watch watch is uh, 22 millimeters like I mentioned before. Uh, we have a 13 millimeter thickness and the lug to lug is 50 millimeters. Now we have an impressive 300 meter water resistance as well. The crystal on this watch is a sapphire crystal and it's uh, treated with an AR coating. The dial here on the Alpina has a very nice glossy black finish compared to some of my other divers which quite often will come in a matte black dial. Uh, it gives it some nice flash and uh, I really like the look of it. Now the hour markers as well as the date window are all framed nicely in polished stainless steel and the date window it dis displays three days. The reason for that being is when the minute hand comes around and starts to cover the date you can always see either the current date, the previous date or tomorrow's date so you can always uh, know uh, today's date no matter where the hands are positioned on the watch. Now I love the handset that they've chosen for this watch. The sword style hands are very nice. I love the pop of orange on the minute hand as well as that triangle logo again uh, on the counterbalance of the second hand. Uh, I also really like how the second hand comes out right over top of the raised chaptering on the watch here. The hands hour markers as well as the orange markings here on the bezel are all applied with loom and I'll put a shot of that up here for you guys to check out. So as you can see the loom on the bezel is a different color than the loom on the hands and hour markers and I should also point out the loom on the hour markers isn't quite as bright as the loom on the hands. So would have been nice if they were all an equal uh, brightness. The uh, bezel and the hour markers also fade a little bit quicker than the hands. Um, but that being said, I do love the uh, combination of the two colored looms. The bezel here is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. It is an aluminum insert here held down by six screws. The bezel is very easy to grip 
at the 12 and 6 o'clock position of the watch. The bezel just juts out just slightly beyond the case uh, as opposed to the 3 and 6 where the case has these little step ups uh, which make it hard to grab from there. The bezel has a very refined feel and sound and there is no play whatsoever in this bezel. The case is a combination of brushed and polished finishes, uh, both done at a very high level. Um, it's a cushion style case and as you can see the crown guards here on this side uh, protect the crown and they've also added that step up on the other side as well giving it some nice symmetry. Um, the case is a little on the larger side but the lugs do jut sharply down and uh, gives it a bit of a smaller look. It's also very comfortable on the wrist. Now the crown here has a enamel fill with the orange Alpina triangle logo. Uh, it's quite large. It has a uh, rubber grip making it very easy to operate even with gloves on and it has a very nice smooth winding action. If we flip the watch over you're going to see here through the display case back Alpina's AL525 movement. This is a Salida SW200 clone. Um, I love the look of their black rotor and this movement is actually quite highly decorated. Uh, there's a lot of perlage going on there and uh, it's only gaining actually about two seconds per day for me so far so I'm really happy with it. So let me just throw it on wrist for a quick wrist shot for you guys. Okay, so first of all, I have to say this is probably a little on the flashier side compared to some of my other tool slash dive watches. Uh, I'll hold up here my Oris Aquas that has more of a straight dive look to it. Uh, but I kind of like that flashiness and I could see getting a lot of uh, wrist time with this guy in the summer months especially. Um, the overall fit and finish is right up there with uh, some of the more expensive brands that I've handled. I'm really happy with that. The one downfall was the loom I wasn't crazy about but just about everything else I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying so far. So that's going to be it. Let's spin the camera around and we'll wrap up today's video. Okay guys that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. One thing I just want to throw out there to you guys after having the Oris sort of side by side with the Alpina uh, they kind of are in line specs wise and I'm thinking of doing a watch comparison video. I did one of the SKX and the Orient Ray which I'll leave a link up here right now. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing a comparison between these two let me know in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.